Thank you. Senator Britt, thank you. Senator Warner from Virginia is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for holding this hearing. And I want to jump right into it on, on some of the tech issues. I, I know some of my colleagues were mentioning the Judiciary Committee hearing yesterday. Um, as someone who thinks that, uh, has felt for a long time, that the, well, the original intent of Section 230 back in 1996 might have made some sense then. This has turned into a get out of jail free card for all the social media companies, and I was glad to hear Senator Graham talk about it yesterday and other members. Uh, I've had a, what I thought was a fairly simple reform of Section 230 for a while out there called the Safe Tech Act, which would basically say, if it's illegal in the real world, it ought to be illegal in the online world. And there ought to not be this kind of, and again, I can't think of any other term other than a get out of jail free card. That obviously hits us in the, in the consumer fraud area. I think the FTC just did a study that said that um, uh, I'm, the way I read it was that when you use typical contact methods, phone, email, whatever, fraudsters have about a 6 to 17% hit rate. But when it appears on a social media platform, or an online ad, it, it, that fraud rate goes up to 61 to 63 percent. Holy heck. Um, so whether it was the kind of uh, gripping testimony we heard yesterday of parents who've lost their kids, or the ability to have Americans ripped off, um, I know this may be a little out of your lanes, uh, but uh, any of you got any thoughts on whether we ought to have a, a thorough reexamination of, of Section 230, uh, even in terms of consumer protection? Why don't we start with you, Ms. sanchez Adams? Yes, thank you for the question. I mean, I agree, as we've all talked about, there's so many different avenues that we need to take to address the issue of payment fraud. Um, the F, you know, as we heard earlier, holding those telecom companies that are allowing robocalls and robotechs to happen, yes. Um, holding pay, um, social media platforms that are allowing these fraudsters to do the work that they're doing on that. But wouldn't, if you're going to hold them accountable, doesn't that require a change in Section 230? Well, yeah, I, I will agree with you that, yes, we need to find a way to hold all players accountable. And that's why we also think institutions that are banking the fraudsters mm -hmm. should also be held accountable. So it's a multi-pronged approach. Mr. Bender, Mr. Well, uh, thank you, Senator. Um, I'm not familiar with the act, but I truly believe focusing on impersonation scams that allow people to basically con people out of money is a, is a great area, and we'd love to work with you on that. Sir. Uh, Senator Warner, thank you for the question. Uh, you know, I think as you've heard from all the witnesses today, uh, we need uh, the actors where the scam, these fraud is being facilitated to have more skin in the game. Um, they need more incentives to uh, invest and to protect their users because ultimately it's the users who uh, are the ones who are making them their money. But, but again, the fact is I'm an old telecom guy, so this is where I'm a little just crazy to me. Section 230, basically 1996 Telecom Act, said if you're one of these platforms, you, you, you have no responsibility at all for any of the content that appears. So the distribution model for this fraudster activity goes through the platforms. And if we don't hold them accountable, we're, I don't think we're ever going to get there. So um, I also know some of you touched, I, I'm going to get one more question on how we can do more real-time reporting. I'm chairman of the Intelligence Committee. We've managed to move forward on real-time um, reporting as we see threats in the uh, in, in the intelligence system. We've still got a ways to go. I do think in terms of internet-based fraud, real-time uh, reporting has to be a component. But I want to move my last question to AI. One of the things that scares the dickens out of me on AI, some good things coming out of this, but there is a, a the scale and speed which, which these tools can be used. Um, and they don't have to have a lot of sophistication. Now, Senator Kennedy and I have a bipartisan bill that looks at could we bring FSOC to the table to look at where there are gaps? Could we end up saying if you use these these tools, you might even have things like treble damages, which already exists in the SEC world. We've been thinking about this on market manipulation, but we've also been thinking about it in terms of consumer fraud. And one of the things um, that, that really concerns me is a lot of these AI tools, you may say, just go make the most money possible, and that may then result in, in screwing around with consumers. But it goes to the question of intent. My time is clicking down. Do any of you have any thoughts on how we get at this intent issue around AI tools? 
So, Senator Warner, Maybe I would you take it for the record. But yeah, I'll be uh, brief, each of you, if you would. Sure. Uh, I, I definitely like the idea of increasing penalties for bad actors who use AI. Good. Well, if you could think about the intent question, I, I would love to get some thoughts on that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Warner. Uh, Senator Butler from California is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if it's okay, I'd love to sort of go back to the point of conversation that uh, Senator Tester actually uh, introduced and this question of who. Um, there are a lot of um, perceptions that, that um, these kinds of 